I'm, I, Welcome to a beautiful sunny day. Reggie, morning. I get to go first. Me? I get to go first. Oh, I seen my name. <laughs> Let me go first. <laughs> okay. Good morning, church family. There we go. Uh, it's good to be with you in worship today. Uh, before we go into my, my, the rest of my announcements, this is the beginning of Suicide Awareness Month, Suicide Prevention Month, and I have several videos that uh, we'll be using this month uh, just to raise your awareness. Uh, our suicide rate in Carroll County is, is much higher than it should be. Any rate is higher than it should be. Uh, but we have a, a fairly high rate in Carroll County, and I just want to lift up these videos as a way of reminding you that people around you are hurting, maybe even someone here, and don't, don't assume that people will work it out on their, on their own. Uh, sometimes we need someone to jump in and help us, so uh, just a reminder. someone who's struggling the help they desperately need. Your support of the National Alliance on Mental Illness funds programs and support groups that can transform a life. Be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. So reach out to someone who may be hurting. I think my head got bigger in the last few years. There we go. So it's good to be here in worship with you today. Glad that you're joining us on this Labor Day Sunday. Whether you're in person or you're online, you are part of this worship today, and that's important to us, and it's important to God. Please fill out the Connect card that's in your bulletin. Uh, that helps me out tremendously. If you're online, you'll find a Connect card, a link to a Connect card that you can fill out online also. Uh, if you're in person today, look for someone that you don't know. Look around you, find someone that you don't know or someone you haven't talked to for a long time. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some people you might not know in the congregation today. So check that out and say hi to them sometime during the, during the, the passing the peace or after the service. Make sure that you've greeted them and introduced yourself. Wear your name tag, which is under my robe today. Wear your name tag so everyone knows that you're a friendly person. Uh, there's one other thing. We'll be celebrating communion today. And those of you who are online, I encourage you to uh, find a piece of bread, a cracker, uh, some juice or some water, something like that. Whatever you have around the house that you can join us. And I hope that you'll join us later on in the service for our time of communion. This is Labor Day weekend. Some of you uh, brought or wore things that remind, you of, remind us of the jobs that you, that you had at one time. About 20 years ago, I was a, I was a carpenter, uh, so I decided to bring my, my hard hat today. Uh, as, we, as we get to the prelude time today, I'd like to take just a minute to turn and tell someone, not the person you came with today, uh, just share with them a job that you had sometime during your life. Uh, and uh, it could be the one that you, the, your main job, or it could be one that you just did a short time. Like I spent a, I spent a week chaining tractors on uh, train cars at John Deere. Uh, pretty cool job, uh, but I only got to do it for a week. So just share with someone a job that you got to do sometime during your life during the prelude this morning. And also in honor of, of Labor Day weekend, we'd like to sing, uh, this isn't in our, in our music or anything, but you all know the words to God Bless America. So we're going to sing God Bless America, and then we'll have our prelude this morning as we prepare, prepare for worship.
worship as we listen to the prelude this morning. said, six days ye shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh, seventh day, day is a Sabbath to the Lord. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. rest. We come in the name of the Spirit, resting from our labors. Let us worship, worship God this day. And our hymn this morning is in your red hymnal, page 364, Because He Lives. Please stand.
to pass the peace of Christ to one another, saying, The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. seated. Our prayer time today, uh, I found what I think is a really nice prayer for, for all those who labor uh, in, in jobs past or present or future, uh, paid and unpaid. So that's going to be most of our prayer time today, but I want to start with your joys and concerns if there's anything that you'd like to lift up this morning. Carol. Midwest uh, Missions sent their first shipment and it's already in Maui. Uh, the, the, uh, one of the email news uh, blurbs that I get uh, said this morning, the people in Maui are saying, don't forget us, uh, which, is, which is kind of the, the chorus after all of these disasters. They hit the news for, for a week uh, or for two weeks and then uh, they feel like they're forgotten. So uh, we, we should not forget them or others who are facing disasters in their lives at this time. And in two weeks is the uh, is Midwest Missions uh, Day of Volunteers. They're looking for people who will volunteer, and we can go over to Midwest Mission that afternoon in Jefferson and volunteer, put kits together, put meals together, put uh, um, weave weave uh, mats, and they're trying to to get a whole bunch of volunteers. I thought it was a thousand. I think the newsletter said ten thousand, didn't it? Um, it was a lot, a lot of volunteers that afternoon in various locations. So plan uh, in two weeks from today to be part of that. What other joys or concerns? Yes. Thank you. It's good to be back. Do I look better? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, I thought after after no surgery, I ought to either look better or I have I ought to have a world class tenor voice, and neither has come true. Anything else today that you want to lift up? What I'd like to do is spend, spend this time, uh, jobs are an important part of our lives, and we're gonna, I'm going to talk in the sermon about these are not just, not just a way to make money, uh, this is also the way that we serve God. So I'd like to spend a few minutes before we pray this prayer together, uh, just lift up some of the jobs that you've done during, during your life, uh, and, uh, and I'm going to kind of walk down the aisle here so that I, I get a chance to look you in the eye and make you feel guilty if you don't say something, right? Uh, no, but just lift up uh, some of the jobs that you've done, and I'll repeat them so we can hear them on, online, uh, just to celebrate the ways that we've served God in our, in our lives. Child care provider. What's, what's your future job? Or what's, what, what do you want to lift up? No? Okay. <laughs> Nursing home administrator. Taught in all 15 community colleges in the state of Iowa. Worked at a, 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 mental, a, a state mental hospital in Minnesota uh, with severely uh, disabled, behaviorally disabled adults with behavioral challenges. So we want to lift, uh, what it celebrate that? Cognitively and. Okay. A lot of, a lot of challenges. We'll say that. Anybody here? H&R Block. H&R Block. Okay, working at the, at the volunteer at the hospital and sounding board for other people. Yep, yep. Mom, the important job, yes. New Hope Village, 35 years. Okay, paid bills and oil and gas wells being drilled. 
Small family, 100-year-old company. Cool. Factory jobs? Mm-hmm. A lot of jobs. <laughs> Who else would like to... Music at Fairview for 24 years. Wow. 600 kids, every one of them for a half hour during, during the week, right? Every one of them. Well, let's be a pastor. Where do I start? I've been a fireman. I've been in construction. I've worked in the lumber yard. But the fireman, job, construction, lumber yard. The best job I've had is being a husband, father, and grandfather. Being a husband, father, and grandfather. Excellent job. Excellent job. I work in a popcorn stand <laughs> at the matinees when all the children came. Okay. And they, they raised their prices and the kids brought their nickels. And, <laughs> and you couldn't give them the <laughs> Worked at the popcorn stand at the, movie, at the movies and, and uh, uh, they raised the prices. The kids couldn't get their food that week because they raised the prices on it. That wasn't very nice of them. No. So I was an elementary school teacher. Elementary school teacher. And Charlotte's Web was her favorite book to, to read and teach. All right. Uh, when I was in college, I worked in an eggplant uh, making powdered eggs for the military. Okay, Ed, working in an eggplant making powdered eggs for the military. All right. Yes. Feeding the calves every night. The calves think that's a pretty important job, don't they? <laughs> All of our jobs are important. Carol newspaper for about 19 years. Um, like love, I mean, being mom and everybody, caregivers were very close to my parents. Taking care of Gary for his two years and Chris for years. And Nursing and, and family and everything, but of course, one of the things she lifted up is, is being a caretaker for, uh, for, for her husband, uh, for his folks, for, for others. That's an important job that many of us have done over the years for, for someone. I'll bet you did. Learn more about humanity as a waitress than doing anything else. Yep. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I want to be a zookeeper, a librarian, and an artist. Zookeeper, librarian, and artist. All right. Cool. I'll come to your zoo. <laughs> oh. And a nursing? Gastroenterologist, cool, cool. Be in, in a race, okay. In a race car, oh man. <laughs> well, it's, you can change your mind, can't you? You can be a lot of things. Who else would like to share? Yeah. And our and our end for many 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 years. I've been in uh, construction work uh, in the lumberyard for 26 years and five months. Uh, worked delivering pizzas for yeah, probably about 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, about 15 years working factory worker out of Pella. Uh, I retired and working at McDonald's now. And McDonald's factory worker. Um, Lumberyard. Lumberyard, construction, yeah. I be a pastor. No, Becky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who else? Yeah. Um, I, I want to be a farmer. A farmer, just like Dad, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who else would like to share? Anybody back here? Being a farmer's wife was the hardest job, huh? <laughs> yes, Piper. A doctor, all right. Cosmetologist by trade, and I managed 172 apartments. Cosmetologist and apartment manager. Anybody else back here? 
I'm sure you've all had some very interesting, interesting jobs. One of, the, one of the things that I laugh about is when I worked for the Quad City Times for a while, I got to color the cartoons for a week. Um, they came in black and white, and I got to use the computer and color the cartoons, and I still have, I still have copies of my cartoons at home. Uh, what, a fun, what a fun job that was. But the point being, we've done uh, this congregation, those of us gathered here, those of us online, we represent so many different things we've done uh, serving other people and serving God. Let's lift all of that up in prayer this morning. The prayer is a responsive prayer that will come up on the screen here. Uh, it's kind of long, uh, but let's pray together. Let us pray to the Lord of all creation from whom comes life and work and purpose. Almighty God, when you formed us lovingly out of the dust of the earth, you breathed into us the breath of life and gave us work, volunteer opportunities, and purpose for living. Let us pray to the Lord of all creation from whom life comes work, who comes life, work, and purpose. You placed Adam in the Garden of Eden to till and keep it. Through our paid and unpaid work, you made us co-creators with you, shaping the world in which we live. You gave dignity to our labor by sending your Son to labor with us. By our efforts, you enrich the world. By our labor, we enjoy the fruits of creation. By serving you, we find direction and purpose. By our labor, our families are made secure. For providing varieties of work and for blessing others by our labor, we give you thanks, O Lord. For those who plow the field and those who make the plow, for farmers and farm workers, for steel workers and machinists, for those who work with their hands and those who move the earth, we give you thanks, O Lord. For those who tend the sick and those who seek new cures, for doctors and nurses, for scientists and technicians, for those who keep notes and those who transcribe, we give you thanks, O Lord. For those who think and those who create, for inventors and explorers, for artists and musicians, for those who write books and those who entertain, we give you thanks, O Lord. For those who work in offices and those who work in warehouses, for secretaries and receptionists, for stockers and bookkeepers, for those who market products and for those who move them, we give you thanks, O Lord. For those who inspire our minds and those who motivate us, for teachers and preachers, for public servants and religious servants, those who help the poor and those who work with our children, we give you thanks, O Lord. For those whose labor is tidiness and cleanliness, for janitors and sanitary workers, for dry cleaners and maids, for those who produce cleaning products and those who use them, we give you thanks, O Lord. For those who sail the waves and those who fly the skies, for captains and attendants, for astronauts and deep sea divers, for those who chart and those who navigate, we give you thanks, O Lord. You bless us all with skills and gifts for labor. You provide us opportunities to use them for the benefit of others as well as ourselves. You guard and protect those who labor in the world. Bless the work of our hands, O Lord. Look kindly upon the unemployed and the disabled. Give health to the sick, hope to the bereaved. Keep us from laboring only for greed. Make us loving and responsible in all that we do. Creator Lord, you are the source of all wisdom, purpose, and labor. Be with us in all that we do to guide and govern our world. Give all people work or volunteer opportunities that enhance human dignity and bonds, bonds us to one another. Give, all, give us pride in our work and volunteer service a fair return for our labor, and joy in knowing that our effort finds its source in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have an opportunity to offer not only uh, the hands that we use to work, but the fruits of, those, of that work uh, of our lives and our hearts to God. Let's receive our morning offering at this time. Lord Jesus Christ, who knew the labor of working in a carpenter's shop, we give you the fruits of our labors, the love of our hearts, the work of our lives. May all that we do glorify you and use this offering to do the work that you need to do in this place and around the world. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Robin's going to share a story for all God's people today. I'm calling it a story for all God's people now, at least temporarily, because it's for everybody, not just for the kids. So would our young folks come on up and anybody else who wants to share in the story for all God's people this morning? Come on down. I promise I don't bite. Good morning. So who's our, who's our uh, soon-to-be farmer? Okay, all right, good, great. Um, what, what do some of the rest of you imagine when you think about what, you, what kind of job you might have when you grow up? Any ideas? Yeah. You're the race car, okay. A zookeeper. You're the zookeeper, excellent. Yeah. Oh, the Omaha Zoo. That, I saw something this week, that is supposed to be the best zoo in the country. Yeah. Uh, a zoo in California that you visited, yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Anybody else? 
That's okay if you don't know yet. Goodness gracious, you've got a lot of growing to do and a lot of things to learn in school and all those things will help you figure out someday what, what kind of job you want. So Terry asked us to bring something um, that would symbolize our job and I'm retired now, but before I retired last December, I worked for St. Croix, that's what that says, St. Croix Hospice. Anybody here know what a hospice is? Yeah. A hospital? It's, re it's related to the word hospital, so you're very, you're very close with that. Hospice is a special program for um, patients who are very, very, very sick, and they're so sick that it's they're probably going to die one day soon, okay? And so they receive a special kind of care. A hospice is, a hospice is a team of people that provide for nurses, social workers, chaplains, doctors, a music therapist, massage therapist, all kinds of people make up the hospice team. And those people travel out to the home where the patient lives or to the nursing home where the patient is living and provide special care for them. I was the hospice chaplain. Does anybody know what the word chaplain means? So the nurses are like the experts on taking care of the patient's physical needs, their pain and other kinds of physical needs that they might have. The chaplain is the expert on grief and emotional and spiritual needs that the patient has. Well, I thought the best way to tell you what a chaplain is would be maybe just to unpack my bag here real quickly. And, um, okay, so when I was doing this hospice job, um, it was during COVID. So we all know about COVID, right? Okay, so I had to carry certain things in my bag. I had to carry gloves because if the patient had COVID or any other kind of infection, I would need to wear gloves to protect myself and to protect them um, in the event of uh, their having some kind of infection. And of course, we all know about masks, right? So I had to wear a mask, and lots of times, sometimes I could wear these masks, but sometimes I had to wear what they call an N95 mask. It's a real heavy mask, and it has like a metal clip here on your nose. They're not very comfortable. And then sometimes I had to wear um, like goggles on my eyes to protect my eyes. That was the part of the job I didn't like very much. Disinfectant wipes for my hands and for um, the, like the steering wheel of my car or anything like that. Sanitizer. This is like, you wouldn't believe how much time I spent um, just trying to keep myself clean, right? And protect our patients. So that's that stuff. Now up here, I've got my tablet. My tablet was like so important to my job. On my tablet, I had all my records, told me where the patient lived, what, the, you know, what their diagnosis was, what kind of care they needed. I had to type up notes after every visit. All of that got done on my tablet. So my tablet was very important. Little notebook, my little cheat notebook where I could keep notes uh, when I forgot how to do something on my tablet, <laughs> which was about every other day. The other thing I could do on my tablet was I could get online and I could look up a, a website that I like called Bible.com and I could use this as my Bible. I could take this, I had to take it into the patient's room and I could find Bible verses there that might give them hope and encouragement, okay? It's part of the job of a chaplain is to give people hope and encouragement when they're afraid or when they've got a problem they need to work out. And then I always carried something like the Upper Room, which is a little devotional magazine. It has a, 
a Bible verse and a little story and a prayer for each day. And sometimes I would share that with people. And then sometimes I took lotion. Now, why would I take lotion? Well, you know, the biggest job of the whole hospice team was to give people comfort. And sometimes the nicest thing you could do is just take a little lotion and kind of gently massage their hands. Now, this lotion has what I think is a very nice scent. It's warm vanilla and sugar. Somebody want to smell it? Tell me what you think. Do you like that? Yeah. Kind of smells like sugar cookies, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Kind of smells like coconut. Yeah. And then, of course, I always had a bottle of water because you always have to keep yourself hydrated when you're working hard. And then, of course, I had my sunglasses because, as I said, we would go out to people's homes or to nursing homes, and I did a lot of driving. So my sunglasses were very essential. So that's a lot of stuff that I had. But that's just to um, help you think about jobs and our work for what we do. Um, I want to share with you a couple of Bible verses about work. And I need to find another pair of glasses here. The first scripture comes from Proverbs 16.3, and this is from the Living Bible Translation. It says, commit your work to the Lord, and then it will succeed. Commit your work to the Lord, and then it will succeed. And the next one is from Colossians 3.23 and 24, and I think you're going to hear that again in just a minute. It says, work hard and cheerfully at all you do, just as though you were working from the Lord and not merely for your boss. Jesus is the one you are really working for. Wow. That's kind of a different thought, isn't it? I want you to know that, uh, how many of you here are, are in school? Almost everyone, a couple that aren't. Okay, if you're in school, you know what your most important job is right now? School, okay? Whatever you do, whether you're in school or cleaning your room or whatever, whatever you do, remember that we don't work for a boss, first and foremost. We don't even work for our parents. We, what we do, our work, our labor, is for Jesus. And if you're not in school yet, school is your, you guys' biggest job, but if you're not in school yet, your job is just to um, mind your parents and uh, keep growing, because someday soon you will be in school, and then you'll be learning a lot more. All right, let's say a prayer. Jesus, help us to remember that everything we do, whether it's school or sports or cleaning our room, everything we do, we do for you. Help us to do it well. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you, guys. like to join me with the morning scriptures from Proverbs 6 through 24. It's in your hymnal Bibles, in your pew Bibles, if you'd like to follow along. Go to the ant, you lazy bones, consider its ways, and be wise without having any chief or officer or ruler. It prepares its food in summer and gathers its sustenance in harvest. How long will you lie there, O oh lazy bones? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, and a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a robber, and want like an armed warrior. A scoundrel and a villain goes around with crooked speech, winking the eyes, shuffling the feet, 
pointing of fingers, and perverted mind devising evil, continually sowing discord, on such a one calamity will descend suddenly, in a moment damage beyond repair. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are abom abomination to him, haunty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that hurry to run to evil, a lying witness who testifies falsely, and one who sows discord in a family. My child, keep your father's commandment, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you, and when you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you, for the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching is a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life, to preserve you from the wife of another, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Reggie. When I was a carpenter's apprentice, we were proudly taught that in 1882, Peter J. McGuire, the General Secretary of the Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners of America, proposed a general holiday for laboring classes to honor those who from rude nature had delivered and carved all grandeur we behold. The idea of honoring labor is a good idea. The bottom line is God cares about what we do. God cares about the everyday things that we do, whatever it is that we do. Strangely enough, the thing about Labor Day that surprises me is card companies have not figured out how to capitalize off Labor Day yet. They, the, the church is kind of considered a, a low day because there are so many people that are traveling that we have a great crowd here today. And, and since it's not a particularly religious holiday, I've never preached a Labor Day sermon before. But as I studied this week, there were a lot of places that I was able to make some connections. The series on Proverbs, after 14 weeks, did you realize we've done 14 of these sermons on Proverbs so far? 14 weeks, we should know that there are, Proverbs has a lot to say about all the everyday things of our lives. First of all, the first connection is that in the last three centuries of American culture, we've turned labor into a commodity. The entrepreneur, the corporation alike, people are merely raw materials that can be bought and sold for the purpose of producing goods and services. If you ask a child what they want to be when they grow up, they'll tell you, oh, a teacher or a doctor or whatever. Well, that's what they want to do when they grow up. We mix up the doing and the being sometimes. God created us to be loved and to love, but God also gave us a job to do. So God, in God's eyes, our value has nothing to do with our with the job, our, but our value has to do with we are God's creatures, loved by God and loving one another. That's the first step in our biblical theology of work. God created people to love and be loved. God didn't create us because he needed someone to do chores. God created us because he wanted someone to love and be loved. Second, on the other hand, God gave us some work to do. The Bible starts with God working. God had the biggest construction job in all of history when he created the universe, creating all the parts of the universe and making them work together. And then God created humankind in his image. We were created by the, in the image of the creator. So we too are creators. And he said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and birds of the year and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Anybody who's ever worked on a farm or in a garden knows that, that having dominion over the earth and subduing it is a big job. We have work to do as God's people. Well, that's not our first reason for being here, but God did give us work to do. And third, finally, command, God commanded us, don't work all the time. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. Not even God worked all the time. We don't have to work all the time 
either. Sometimes we lose sight of that in our culture. Then we're so, so focused on success and getting things done and, and making, our, making the, the money that we need, we forget that sometimes rest, rest is the most important work that we can do. So a simple theology of work begins with we're created for love, we're given a job, and we're commanded to rest. That's a pretty good beginning of a theology of work. Let's see what Proverbs has to say to us about the work that we do. We start in chapter 6, verse 6. Go to the ant, you lazy bones. Consider its ways and be wise without having any chief officer or ruler. It prepares food in the summer and it gathers sustenance in harvest. In other words, take the initiative. Know what needs to be done and do it. If you've ever supervised people, you know that having people who know what needs to be done and they just do it, you know how valuable that is. You know how valuable those people are. Take the initiative. Don't wait to be told. Just do it because that's what good workers do. Good workers take the initiative. The chapter continues in verse 9. How long will you lie there, O lazy bones? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed warrior. I've always said that 90% of keeping a job is just showing up, right? 90% of keeping a job is just showing up. But what Proverbs is saying here is, is don't forget to show up. Don't sleep in late. Don't take long breaks. Don't, dre- don't forget to get dressed for work. Don't come with the wrong tools. Uh, be on time. Do all those basic things if you want to be a good worker. Or poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed warrior warrior it says proverbs says that we have to do better than just show up to work we have to come to work ready to work and take our jobs seriously so third proverbs gives us a great list of things to do if you want to lose your job i think this is kind of funny in the midst of this chapter about keeping a job it starts a list of things that we can do to lose our job And starting in verse 12, it says, A scoundrel and a villain goes around with crooked speech, winking the eye and shuffling the feet, pointing the fingers with perverted mind, devising evil, continually sowing discord. On such a one is calamity, a calamity will descend suddenly, in a moment, damage beyond repair. If you don't, if you you don't take your job seriously, you're going to lose it. Basically, that's what we're saying. There are six things, he says, that are, that are abhorrent to God. Haughty eyes, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. It goes on this list of, of all the things that people do that ruin them as workers. All the things that we do to mess around on our jobs. You know, the, thing, the bottom line there, I think, is don't play games. Don't play games with, when you're working. Just do your job. And finally, Proverbs says, remember who you are and do the right thing. No matter where you work, no matter what you do, no matter how old you are, you are God's child. And don't forget what God wants you to do. Do the right thing. In order, paraphrasing this passage just a little bit, he says, my child, keep your father's commandment. Do the right thing. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. Do the right thing. Bind the commandments upon your heart always. In other words, do the right thing. Tie them around your neck. Do the right thing. When you walk, they will lead you to do the right thing. When you lie down, they will watch over you and help you to do the right thing. When you're awake, they'll walk with you. When the command, for the commandment is a lamp and a teaching to the light, so I beg of you, do the right thing. Proverbs has a lot of advice about how we should work. We can take the, the four of them that we picked out, take the initiative, take your job seriously, don't play games. And fourth, no matter what, no matter what your job is, do the right thing. But I want to push our theology of work just a little bit further. One last step here. I want to push a little bit further and say no matter what you do, whether you're paid or unpaid, whether you're retired or you're working now or you're hoping to work in the future, whatever it is that you do, you're working for God. You're not just working for a paycheck. You're not just working for a boss. You're working for God. Maybe what you do for God is the same that you do for paycheck. Maybe it's not. 
Your kingdom work might be paid or unpaid. Your kingdom work might find you being the lowest paid worker on the scale or it might find you being the highest paid. It doesn't matter because it's kingdom work. You might work an hour a month or 80 hours a week. It doesn't matter because it's kingdom work. You might be in the public eye or you might be in your home. It doesn't matter because it's kingdom work. Your kingdom work might lead you to be a leader of thousands or the chief executive grandpa of two little ones. It's all kingdom work. You might serve customers. You might serve a spouse who's in poor health. It doesn't matter because it's kingdom work and you do it for God. Do you have a sense that what you do is kingdom work? Do you have a sense that what you do is important to God? It is. It's vitally important. Whatever it is that you do on a daily basis, it's vitally important to God. Robin read Colossians 3 for us. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward for it. It is the Lord Jesus Christ you are serving. That's the important thing, to know that whatever you do, whatever you do, you do it for the Lord Jesus Christ. You do it with enthusiasm, with passion, with a sense of calling and purpose and mission. And you know that everything that you do in every way at every time is work for God. We call that a sense of vocation. That's the, the, the religious word that goes with it. A sense of vocation, knowing that what we do is important to God. On August 9th, 1942, the USS cruiser Astoria was the first cruiser ship to engage the Japanese during the Battle of Savo Island in World War II. A midshipman from Ohio named Elgin Staples was swept overboard when the number one eight-inch gun turret exploded. He was badly injured, and he was floating in the ocean. He had just enough energy to activate a, a safety belt of a... Uh, a life belt that he had around his waist. And it was that life belt that kept him alive until he was able to be rescued. After being rescued, he had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to reflect. And he pulled out that belt that he had saved. He pulled out that life belt and he looked at it. And it was actually made by the Goodyear Rubber Company. Strangely enough, he came from Akron, Ohio, the home of the Goodyear Rubber Company. So he studied this belt and he thought about, you know, what, what was it about this belt? What was so important about it? And he, and he tells this story at home and he found a number on that belt, a registration number. And he, he went home and he told this story of what had happened and how this belt that had been made in Akron, Ohio had saved his life. And he asked his mother who worked for, for uh, the rubber company, uh, he asked his mother, what's this number for? What does this number mean? And she said, well, the company believes in personal responsibility for the war effort. So everyone who works in the factory is assigned a number. And, and that number, the number of the inspector goes on the belt when that belt is completed. And he remembered the number on the belt because he had studied it so closely. And when he recited the number, the number on the belt was the number that had been assigned to his mother. His mother was the inspector who had inspected the belt that saved his life. Sometimes we might feel like we're just another number, like we're just a cog in a big machine. We might feel like we're not very important. We might feel like, like our, our, whole, our job is just not all that important to anybody, but you never know. You never know when God is going to call your number to make a difference in someone's life. You never know when God is going to call your number to really change the future for someone. You never know when God is going to call your number and that your labor and your skills and your efforts that might seem small, so small to you will be so important to someone else. You never know when God's going to call your number to do the thing that will be most important for someone around you whether it's part-time or full-time, paid or unpaid, past, present, or future, the work that you do for God is the work that you do. The number one most important thing. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord because you do. Amen.
In the United Methodist Church, communion is open to all people regardless of your church membership or your background. All those who who love God and desire to live in love with their neighbor are invited to receive of the bread and the juice uh, and uh, be part of this communion today. Also those online as well. The responses are on the screen, so let's pray together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you that we never labor alone, O God. You are our help at times, in times of struggle. You are the voice of encouragement that springs from the deep within our souls. You join us in our service and view our care for others as our faithful worship. You are the one who seeks to lift up and drown, and, and drown out. You are the one who is always on the side of the newcomer, the refugee, the immigrant struggling to make a new start. You provide so that no one needs to go without. You have called forth generously from every life. You count it robbery for us not to share with those in need. The most important lives to you are those who have the least, who have only you for their survival. This is why the teeming masses praise you. This is why there's such a crowd of saints glorifying you, O God. This is why we desire to join with them as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are they who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy and surrounded by glory. And we perceive that same holiness and glory in Christ. From Christ we learn that how we treat the least, how we treat the least, the essential workers in our lives, is how we treat you. From Christ we learn that everyone deserves a livable wage. Even those who have only the opportunity to work a single hour in the day. From Christ we learn that all are worthy of respect and care, even those we've written off as hopeless cases. From Christ we learn that to feed the hungry is our responsibility, and that we can do it out of the meager resources that we've been given. From Christ we've learned that that to be the greatest is to stoop down and become the servant of anyone who is in need. On that last evening, when Jesus was with his disciples, he did not want to, to serve. He, he became the servant of all. He removed his outer garments, took a towel and a basin, and assumed the position of the lowest slave as an act of grace. Jesus washed the feet of all who were present. This is the gospel Christ wants us to live. And then he took the bread and became a, a servant to all. And he, he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And this is my blood which is poured out for you. For the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We do want our lives to reveal your gospel, O God. We want our lives to become expressions of your prevenient grace. This is why we embrace the example of Christ, expressed in this holy mystery that our souls proclaim. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious service, labor of love, saturate these gifts of bread and wine. Cause them to become for us body and blood of Christ, your gift to us. Gracious servant, labor of love, saturate the gift of our lives, the very sweat from our brows. Cause them to become for the world your church, the sacrificial body and the humble bride of Christ, your gift to us. In your precious name and unimaginable power, we pray today and always. Amen. Would those who are going to help come forward?
All are welcome. Come and receive the gift of Christ.
Well, we got a lot done this morning, didn't we? We remember all the work that God has done in us and all the work that God does through us as we stand and sing our closing song, which is Eat This Bread. announcements that are check out all of the announcements that are in your bulletin today they're all important and you'll want to know what's happening so you can participate in all of them uh, let's use our prayer after communion amber let's go back to the prayer after communion for our benediction today okay. can you get there yep. surprise Let's all pray together. Weaver, potter, imaginative creator of all there was, is, and ever shall be, we are in awe of your grace. None works harder than you, anywhere nor at any time. Work with us to provide for our daily bread that we might share with others. Be patient with us as we repent of our sins just as we are patient with others as they seek to live out their repentance before us. Help us to fight the temptation to want more than we need and the evil we cause when we do not share our bounty with others. For you call us to work beside you with compassion and mercy forever. Amen. Nope. Postlude. Reggie? Thank you. 